And I look over and I see our executive producer. Look at what he's wearing. Yeah, but not that. What? Not well, that. come here, come here, a second. Come here, Doc. <laughs> wear gray with maroon. Yes, we... <laughs> and if you make up for last night, we had a group here last night that was a rough audience. Uh, the kind of people... Let me give you an idea of the kind of crowd. They'd give a condemned man a TV frozen dinner for his last meal, <laughs> then tell him to hold it on his lap while he was on the electric chair. <laughs> That's a rough... Crowd. Anyway, a lot of you are out of town, and at this time of year... Uh, we thought we should give an occasional tip as you're walking around Southern California. Now, f for example, if, you, if you're walking down, say, Sunset or Santa Monica, any place, and you can buy a Cartier watch for $5 from a stranger, come out to my house. I've got an aluminum car I'd like to show you. Uh, you've uh, done it with a gift bar. Are you about finished with your gift buying yet? I want to tell you, did you receive that the battleship New Jersey is... What, lobbing 16-inch shells now into Lebanon? If they want some heavy artillery, I've got it at home. I have some holiday fruitcake. <laughs> you know, I have a suspicion. I've talked about this before. There's only one fruitcake in the whole world, and people keep mailing it to each other. <laughs> Nobody ever eats it. They just... <laughs> Has, did you ever pick up a piece? It has the density of uranium. <laughs> anyway, the Cabbage Patch doll is the big seller. Yeah. You know, I just found out who's making all the money. Ted Koppel gets a royalty every time they sell a Cabbage Patch doll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that Koppel. <laughs> you know, the dolls are selling big again this year? Military dolls. G.I. Joe. Still going big. The second biggest seller is the Ed Meese doll. You wind it up and it shoots off its mouth. I'm going to keep doing Meese jokes till I get something. Christmas, I, I mentioned I get sentimental. I, I hark back to my youth on the plains of Nebraska. And, well, we were kind of poor. Oh. My mother used to save the tinsel off the tree and make soup out of it. But if you, uh, that's poor, yeah. But if you took the NBC tour today, you can tell it's Christmas at the NBC commissary. They put up a tree in the Roach Motel. <laughs> have you, uh, have, you ever, have you been to Beverly Hills and taken a walk down Rodeo Drive? You should do that while you're out here. It's probably the most expensive street in the world. You need a gold American Express card to buy collar stays. <laughs> But all the stores are getting to the spirit. Gucci's uh, shoplifting alarm, for example, plays Silent Night. <laughs> but Rodeo Drive is a wild street. <laughs> Saw an Arab riding a camel down uh, Rodeo Drive today without any humps. Watch this one. <laughs> and I said, you're, how come your camel doesn't have any humps? And the Arab says, I was in New York last week and parked it on the street. <laughs> You're right. I accept that. You know what Santa Clauses get for playing Santa Claus? Only $4.50 to $6 an hour. Now, that's not a lot of money, but you get a hell of a vacation. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess the show business news today, Joan Collins finally made it. You know, she got her picture, her star, on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And as you probably know, she plays the avaricious Alexis on television's Dynasty. <laughs> now she has a, has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's an improvement for Alexis. She started out in the gutter and made it to the sidewalk. <laughs> did you see? Speaking. Speaking of Dynasty, did you see who's going to be making some guest appearances? They call them cameo appearances, very small appearances on Dynasty soon, with Joan Collins, Gerald Ford, former President Gerald Ford, and Henry Kissinger. 
Yeah, they're going to play themselves. Gerald Ford will play Gerald Ford. Henry Kissinger will play God. Uh, Anybody here from Chicago? Yeah. Okay. There was a front page story today about, about judicial corruption in Chicago. Did you know that? Yeah, a, a grand jury indicted three either present or former judges accuse them of racketeering or bribery. Now, the problem, of course, is that everyone will think that the man who wears judicial robes in Chicago means that he took bribes. And that's not fair. Because you can't book a judge by his cover. <laughs> you didn't boo when I threw the grenade in Hirohito's den. <laughs> Did you see the latest astronomical news? Some scientists at Caltech trained a radio telescope on our galaxy, the Milky Way, and have discovered what they think is a gigantic black hole. Do you know what that is? That's a void that stars pour into and are never seen again. We call it television. <laughs> anyway, tonight, you're in the good mood. I'm glad you're in such a, glad you're in such a good mood tonight, because we have a funny show. A very funny, funny man is here tonight. Mr. Mel Brooks. Right. And also, a fine actress with a great sense of humor, Miss Terry Gar is here. And, and, and if that wasn't enough, <laughs> and it probably is, <laughs> the Mighty Carson Art Players. During the Christmas shopping season, there's a lot of attention paid to issues concerning the consumer. The Tonight Show presents the following segment to protect the buying public from potential ripoffs in the marketplace during the holiday season. Now, here to do just that is our consumer supporter, your own champion, the superstar of consumerism, David Howitzer. <laughs> Good evening, I'm David Howitzer, and welcome once again to Consumer Supporter. If your TV repairman is cheating you, call me. If your auto mechanic is cheating you, call me. If your wife is cheating on you, tell her to call me. <laughs> now, during this holiday season, let me emphasize one thing. Don't be a careless consumer or a shafted shopper. Now, here's our consumer tip of the week. Never buy Christmas ornaments from a nude man on a merry-go-round. Now, Christmas, of course, is the biggest gift-giving time of the year. But Christmas gifts should bring ho, 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 not no, no, no. Now, that's why I'm here tonight, to help you, pre prevent you. I'm here for a lot of reasons. <laughs> but mainly to help prevent you from being ripped off this holiday season. During... Give me a break. During the next few weeks, you'll be doing a lot of entertaining. But make sure, friends, that the champagne you pay a premium price for is a premium champagne. Here's an easy way to tell. Good champagne comes with a cork. Bad champagne comes with a fly. <laughs> Sansabelt, not a good brand. Now, friends, be very careful when ordering a home computer from a mail-order catalog. Now, this is what happened to a Mr. Chuck Up of Upchuck, Illinois. <laughs> He writes, Dear Mr. Howitzer, I've been interested in learning how to operate a home computer ever since I got my tie and most of my chest hair sucked into one of those 24-hour instant banking machines. I answered an ad from a company that offered an Apple home computer... Computer. Not a computer. He doesn't type well. An Apple home computer for the unbelievably low price of $45 complete. Sounds almost too good to be true, and it was. For this is the Apple computer that they sent him. That's right, friends. 
Always read those labels. Always be suspicious if there's a worm in your computer. Now, one word of caution. During the holiday season, a lot of people in those shopping malls are there just to prey on you. So don't make yourself a victim of pickpockets by wearing, for example, a money to pay. <laughs> or credit card eyeglasses. <laughs> I just report the facts, friends. <laughs> now, kitchen appliances are popular gifts at Christmas time, but some kitchen appliances are more useful than others. Now, the electric popcorn popper, of course, is very useful. But here's an appliance that's not too useful. The popcorn depopper. You pour the popcorn in, and you get back an ear of corn. It's a good price, but not a good value. Let's go once again to the mailbag. Here's a letter from a Mrs. Todd Bod of Lake Penicillin, Minnesota. <laughs> Dear Mr. Howitzer, at a discounted electronics chain, I paid $59 for a phone answering machine, and I got ripped off. Well, did she ever. $59 is a great price for a phone answering machine, but not when this... Is what you get. <laughs> Phone answering machine. Who wants to be bothered cleaning out the bottom of the phone answering machine? <laughs> I thought that was going to be dynamite. <laughs> Companies that make one item and do it well should stick to what they do best. Case in point. The folks who manufacture Mr. Coffee make a fine product, but recently they tried to expand into another business aimed at helping apartment owners dispose of their dead pets. <laughs> With this product, Mr. Coffin. <laughs> That's friend. You just jam your dead pet into Mr. Coffin. And, and it makes a hot, steaming cup of your furry little ex-companion. Now... Friends. Even though, friends, <laughs> even though it's decaffeinated, David Howitzer cannot endorse it. Rest in peace, Max. <laughs> now, you've all seen those little portable radio headsets that people wear while they're walking or jogging. The Sony Walkman. One company introduced a radio for people to listen in on their bathrooms. The Sony Sitman. <laughs> Real <laughs> it used to be, friends, every woman dreamed of receiving a fur coat for Christmas. But these days, some women oppose the idea of having an animal killed just to wear its fur. So as a sideline, one mink coat manufacturer is producing these. The halibut stole. <laughs> friends, I knew... You say, why a model in a bikini? Because we need the ratings. Now, folks, I'm not sure it's worth $17,500, even though the pockets are filled with tartar sauce. There it is right there. Okay. You know, friends, <laughs> parents can't be too careful about buying safe toys for their children. Now, the most popular doll this year, of course, as you all know, is the Cabbage Patch Kid. Now, cute as can be, nothing dangerous about them. But one callous toy manufacturer has come up with this dangerous imitation, the Cabbage Patch Rabbi. <laughs> Comes with a real meat cleaver. Read those labels. Read those labels, friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Silly time. Moon must be starting to get full. <laughs> I've known Mel Brooks for over 20 years. He is one of the most inventive, bizarre, mad, uh, 
stream of consciousness people I know. Uh, he's a writer, of course, actor, producer, director, a hassock. <laughs> <laughs> he has a new movie opening tomorrow in which he co-stars with his wife, Anne Bancroft, called To Be or Not To Be. Would you welcome Mr. Mel Brooks? Polish tempo. Yes. Yes. First of all, I saw the picture the other night with a bunch of people. We laughed. It's funny. Oh, it's, it's nice. a funny it's picture. Nice it was meant to be, wasn't it? Did you pay? No. Oh. <laughs> Like that. It hasn't opened and you're already counting the box office. No, well, you know, you never know. Yeah. Uh, Was this an expensive picture to make? I mean, I did. This picture cost over $450. <laughs> yes. And I suppose when you put the color in there, I mean, it... <laughs> the color was another $100. <laughs> I mean, it never stops costing money. These pictures cost a lot of money. <laughs> the translation of Sweet Georgia Brown into Polish was another thirty-seven forty. No, since they, since they haven't seen this, that's oh. exactly true. The thing opens with a production number of the Bronsky family singing Sweet Georgia Brown in Polish. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, they're doing, they're doing phonetic Polish. And then at the end of the pictures, it says, Sweet Georgia Brown, Polish translation by whoever yes, the person yes. was. Tad Danielewski did the Polish translation. A beautiful lady called Ivana came from uh, UCLA, and she helped us with our pronunciation. We dance in Polish, too. That's right. Which is a lot, a lot harder than singing in Polish. Right. There's a lot of turning of the feet that I can't explain. <laughs> Polish dancing will kill you. The, the original <laughs> to be or not to be, I found out today, because I have in my den at home a three-sheet, which is the big thing they put out in front of motion picture theaters, of to be or not to be, starring, and on top it says Carol Lombard, and underneath, in 75% type, yeah. Jack Benny, Yeah, he made in 42 it. He wasn't the major star that Carol Lombard she was, was then. She was. She was fabulous. But Jack Benny was very, very wonderful in that movie. He was terrific. It was his favorite picture, he used to tell me. Yeah. He was, he was, what a guy. You know, um, we, we did a little salute, a little yeah. tribute to, to Jack Benny. Everybody who saw it with us, or in the business, so right away, we all said, isn't that, isn't that nice to do for Jack? Yeah. As you go to this Kabelski Street. Yes, in in Warsaw, when Tim Atherson is running through the rain, hiding from the Nazis, we cut to a street sign, and it says Kubelski Street, and Benny Kubelski was really Jack Benny's name, so right. we, we did a little homage. And then my walk, when I came back to see Charles Durning once, mm -hmm. so they called me Concentration Camp Earhart. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little Benny, you know, that side to side. We all grab a little here and there yeah. from everybody. Oh, he, was, he was a genius. Did you know Jack well? Spent time with him? I didn't know him that well. He saw Blazing Saddles. He wrote a note. He just, he loved it. And we met him at a Jack Lemon play. And we talked later. And he's, he was a wonderful. And he did my wife Anne's television special. She's wonderful in it, too. Yeah. Your wife, Anne Bancroft. Yeah. My wife is terrific in the picture. She is? I hate to say that she's better than me in it. I really hate to no. say it. I, I mean, I really hate to say it. I mean, you're talking <laughs> real deep hate. Deep hate. She is better than me. And anyway, uh, Jack Benny was, was, was remarkable. You know that, Joe. Oh, yeah. Which one? I'll bet, I'll bet you know it. You know, he was a victim of George Burns. You know, George Burns used to persecute him unmercifully. He would, he would tear him to, He would just make Jack Benny laugh at, at, you know, at the wrong time. And one time Jack Benny was opening on a show on Broadway, and George got up in the second act. He stood up and said, laundry. And Jack Benny collapsed. I mean, I had to take him off stage. He has him, he has and, him so sad. Yes. And one day, I was at NBC at the truck. You remember, Ben's truck. Everybody right. eats, eats, a, eats a sandwich that they take you to UCLA Hospital later at <laughs> night from, from the truck. And uh, anyway, George Burns was eating a sandwich. I was eating a sandwich. And Jack Benny came out dressed as an Indian. Dressed as an Indian with full feathers, fringes, beaded moccasins, war paint. And he walked to Ben's truck to get a cup of coffee. And George Burns looked at him and very quietly said, Hi, Jack. Working? <laughs> 19 he times falling down. He couldn't go back and do the show. I mean, George, My favorite, when we were quick, Freddie knows it, was it Jeanette McDonald or, yes. who sing? They were going to Jeanette McDonald's house one night, and George says to Jack, You know, Jack, it would be very embarrassing if when Miss McDonald got up to sing, you would laugh. That's <laughs> all he said to him. After dinner, somebody says, Jeanette, would you sing? And Jack. <laughs> On the floor. Of course. Of course. We'll still take a break. We're coming right back. Out of program.
About his movie to be or not to be. Of course, you do the soliloquy. Yeah. Still playing the. I can make a living at it, but he's very good. Yes, yeah. too good, yeah. Yeah. To be, or did you ever want to play Hamlet? You do the soliloquy, of course, in the picture, to be or not to be. I've always wanted to play Omelet, never Hamlet. Omelet? Yes. Omelet is the Jewish version That's of That's right, Hamlet, of course. I used to work years ago in the... Years ago in Yiddish theater, there was a guy called Ben C. and Whitler. Nobody knew his name, but he played Hamlet. Really? Yes. He came out of the, the Jewish word for I forget... Or I forgot is vergessen. That's the Jewish word. The guy came out on stage. It's true. He's playing Hamlet. Walks out with the knife and everything, and he says, in in Yiddish, you'll you'll know what this is in English because it's easy even for you, you big guy. <laughs> he comes. He walks out and he says, zu sein or nicht zu sein. Das ist die Frage. <laughs> Forget <laughs> it. He forgot it. He forgot the soliloquy. He walked off. He came back on. Yeah. But that's. It, I do it, and I do it in the movie. And one of the jokes in the movie is, of course, I. I don't even get that far. Guy gets up. I get. I. I go as far as to be or not to be, and then it all goes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But I got Jack Riley waiting in the in the prompter's box. To, to do we have a small uh, a clip? Do we not? I want to explain a little about this. Why clip. don't you do that? my wife, <laughs> Anne Bancroft? whose name is Anna Bronsky in the movie, is sort of having a romance with Tim Matheson. I think she still is. I yes, swear could to God. be. <laughs> they get wrapped up in those pictures. We'll talk about this after the show. Who's the lawyer that worked with you? Well, I never uh, <laughs> I make a joke. I, my wife loves me and I love my wife. <laughs> Anyway, she is having this relationship with Tim Matheson, and the Gestapo arrests her, takes her out of the apartment. I come back to the apartment. I expect to see my wife in bed, and who do I find? Cut to Phil. Here it is. From to be, to be or not to be. Sweetheart, sweetheart, sweetheart. So many hours with those Nazi censors. And there's some more bad news. They want us to cut out the gypsy number. It seems they don't like gypsies either. Oh, let's face it, sweetheart. Without Jews and gypsies, there is no theater. When this war is over, I'm gonna get you everything you need. You need a coat. You need a dress. You can see this. Oh, you need shoes. And you need a shave. I love this tape. Wait a minute. What is Andre doing in my robe in my bed? Selecki's here. Where? Who's Selecki? Selecki here already. How? He came by plane. Are you sure? I was just with him in his hotel suite. <laughs> what? And I'm going back there to have dinner with him. Like Good. Good. <laughs> Who are you? Savinsky. <laughs> Savinsky? Then who's Selinsky? Selecki. He's a spy. I heard him talking with Earhart on the phone. Earhart? Earhart? Yes, he's the head of the Gestapo. The Gestapo? You were right. Selecki's got that list, and he's taking you to Gestapo headquarters tomorrow morning, maybe even tonight. List? What list? What are you talking about? What should I do? Go back his plan. The important thing is to keep Selecki in that hotel. He mustn't get to Colonel Earhart with that list. Wait a minute. This man is so dangerous. Why are you sending her back? Somebody's got to stop him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now look, Selecki and Earhart have never met. If we could find somebody to play Colonel Earhart. A good actor. A great actor. A dead actor. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I like the cut. Listen to me, you can't do that. He did it. 
It was fun. It was fun. I, I, that, was, that is what is called. Thank you. That is what is called a courageous double take. I mean, yes. yes. I mean, three snores. I, I took shave, a long time yes. with those. After shave to fall asleep. Courageous. That was a long time. I enjoy doing this picture. Yeah. Like really, Alan Johnson directed me. Alan Johnson choreographed Springtime for Hitler. <laughs> Alan Johnson is nuts. <laughs> yes. Anyway, he was one of, and he let me, he, he, he helped me take a, a lot of crazy acting liberties that I, I don't yeah. normally take, you know. But I play Colonel Earhart, I play Bronsky, I play Hamlet, I play. Dead Soletsky with a beard and a mustache, and I also play Hitler. Yes, right. One day, <laughs> the commissary was crowded. We only had 20 minutes to eat. I took my general step. We're dressed up. I am, I swear, I'm not making this up. Let me see. I want to get my comb so I can prove it. Yes. This proves it. I went out like this, as Hitler. I went out as Hitler with my mustache and my hat, my uniform. All of us, the Nazi general staff, we went. To the Apple Pan Dolly on Pico Boulevard to have an Apple Pan Dolly. <laughs> well, you never saw a service like that in your life. <laughs> <laughs> they were. Normally, you know, they, can I get you anything else, Mr. Hitler? <laughs> More water, Mr. Hitler? I mean, I mean, we were in and out of there in about 10 seconds. I mean, but you, we really, you we also, really enjoyed it. You also got a um, home box office special out? Yes, it's uh, Showtime. Showtime. I am doing a special on Showtime. Uh, it's the greatest acting of my life. I am playing a Jewish person. Mm. Yes. Because, you know, I'm not Jewish. I didn't know that. No, this is one of the great charades. <laughs> this is one of the greatest fabrications of all time. And you're revealing time? I was, I was 5'11", blonde, a Gentile with a perfectly little nose. I went into Mount Sinai for over 36 hours. They knocked the stuffings out of it. <laughs> they pulled out my nose, they turned it, they bulbed it, they shortened my ear, they took two inches out of my legs because I wanted to make it as a Jew comic. <laughs> I, I knew I'd never make it. As a Gentile. No, as a Gentile. <laughs> See what happened to you? That's right. And, uh, any, anyway, on this, on this, on the Showtime thing, on the you have a question thing from the audience, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's an audience with Mel Brooks. I went to London and all of these... English actors ask me questions, and uh, they say things like, Mr. Brooks, what do you do when you're attacked for, for being in vulgar taste, for having bad taste? I mean, how do you respond to that? I usually say, I say, up yours! What do you mean? That's how I respond. What bad One of your straps is coming uh, undone. That's all right. It's okay. Want to point that out? Thank you. How are you? Mom, she's got nothing in the back holding it up. <laughs> How are you? Is that comfortable for you? Yes, I'm fine, thanks. I, I can't come out here after Mel Brooks and tell funny little stories. No, no, you come out and be charming. <sighs> okay, what if I tell recipes or something? Be charming like dinosaur? So, I mean, he's so funny. Is your insecurity complex starting with you again? I mean, no, well, well, I mean you're lovely, question. you're talented, you're, uh, you're pretty, well, thank you. you know, you know, all those things yeah, are going for you. You are prettier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Taller and more talented. <gasps> no. As no, a girl, no, for girl talents. Okay. Not for boy talents. <laughs> Chauvinistic, you see? No, no, I meant, I meant high, high singing, so, you know. Yeah. This Girl. is the attitude that Do you sing at all? The whole world. No, not at all. Never. I was uh, singing in Mel's movie, except yes. that I had to be dubbed by someone who could sing. Oh, sweet mystery of life. Remember young Frankenstein? Oh, yes. 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 At the end when she got... Oh, uh, yes. The... Yeah. Well, we needed a shrill voice and your voice was too pretty. That's why we dubbed it. <laughs> he is the kind Very man good recovery. Ever worked Very on. nice. <laughs> Tell him what I paid you. They'll find out how kind I was. A hundred dollars in cash. A hundred in cash. That's about it. He slipped it in my hand on the side. That's what I got for doing the movie. Are you serious? <laughs> no. Oh, I didn't think so. <laughs> she got eleven hundred dollars. You did a lot of... <laughs> You did a lot of movies when you were starting and not made much money at all, right? This was the first movie I ever did where I got my name up there and everything. The Mel Brooks movie. What was it called again? It was called Young Frankenstein. Frank. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Here, here. Great movie. Yeah. Is there, somebody said that money wasn't particularly important to you, though. Well, it isn't particularly important to me. It does not buy happiness. That's, that's true. the only statement. You know, Freddie thinks that's funny. <laughs> he thinks, I think he does think it buys, it buys happiness. Yeah. But I don't think it does. Really? No. 
It buys a lot of things. Money, money buys girls for Freddie. That's what makes them happy. <laughs> You see, very few people will go out to dinner and eat with him. You know, a lot of food falls out of his mouth. <laughs> and he, he buys people to eat with him because nobody who isn't paid yes. will eat with Freddie. Yeah, I know. That's disgusting. You know, you know. He'll, he'll tell you he wears a bib. They give him a bib wherever he goes. <laughs> I made it up, folks. He's clean as anything. Well, what else do you want to know? I don't know. Anything. Okay. Well, you're making good money now, though. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm making more money than I've ever made in my but life. But doesn't that make you happier than when you were not earning any money? That's a hard question. <laughs> I, well, no. You mean you'd rather be broke than have money? Oh, no, I wouldn't rather be broke, but, you know, uh, responsibility comes with money, and a lot of my friends have started working and making money. They got business managers, and they invested in stuff, and pork bellies, and I don't know what the hell. And, oh, uh, I can't, I'm not good. I'm very irresponsible with my money, so I just save it, and I don't do anything with it. Did you make some good investments? Absolutely not. I've, <laughs> I've made the worst uh, investments in the history of the world. Like what? What did you invest in? Well, like, uh... Well, first of all, real estate. Now, everybody knows that's a bad investment. People always say you should put your money in... I know. I, I, I went wrong on some real estate property I bought. What you buy in Lawrence, Kansas, or what? <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. No, that was fiction. That was a, also a fictional joke. Uh, I bought some chinchillas. Well, you mean raised chinchillas and breed... Yeah, to breed. It was going to be a surefire deal. That was a big thing a few years ago. I know. What happened? Did you, well, did you buy had, the chinchillas? Yeah, and they had a yellow streak on their back. <laughs> then they, they were no good. Well, a guy came around and inspected them and said, this isn't a good kind of chinchilla. You, you are, uh, you've, been, you've been taken. Really? <laughs> and, and then a couple of months later, it deci they decided this was a good kind. It was the champagne variety, it was ah, called. Ah, the rare yellow back yeah. chinchilla. <laughs> This yellow back chinchilla, everybody know that. You see, Andy, if you buy the yellow back chinchilla. Yeah, I think I get that now. Yeah, the champagne. The champagne chinchilla. We're going to come back to talk, okay? Good, I have something serious to talk about. I want to talk about something. You should see, before you go, you should see the look on the band's face. I mean, they really are animals. I mean, they are... That's true. We're going to return, though. Animals. <laughs> So, what is, so there was an article somebody told me about you recently. Uh huh. Because you never know whether to believe the article. Said so you were a, a, a dreamer. Now, what does that mean? That you dream a lot at night, or? Well, it, I don't know what that means exactly. You know, when they write things. But I think it probably means I have a low threshold of boredom. I, if I get bored about when someone's talking, I just go A W O L. You know, absent with open lids. Yeah. I just stare yeah. at the person and turn off. Don't you do that? Sometimes. What, what bores you? I mean, what's your threshold of boredom about? Well, you know, when people start talking, everybody's got their axe to grind. When they start getting on their axe to grind, I just want to go, uh-oh, this is a pitch. Yeah, 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 what's the point? And I know I have to wait through a lot of stuff, so I just turn it off and wait till the Terry, end. Terry, that's called conversation. Yes. That's that is? called yes. communicating. Somebody says, I don't like white bread. <laughs> you say, someone says, I like seven grains sprouted wheat. You, you don't say go to hell you say oh oh that's it that's it why do you like that bread right. you see it conversation well, would you like to be in that conversation i mean seriously would you like to be in the conversation we would about be asleep bread? we would be asleep with walt disney in the frozen basket somewhere <laughs> if we if we got it right if we turned off everybody who talked you know how many people bore us a day <laughs> oh excuse me well, 1600 people a day talk to me about things i could go <clears throat> <laughs> But I don't. Because you say, how are you? Conversation, yes. you say.